Hi, this is Ralph. We're going to continue on with our XHTML basics and we're going to focus on some lists. So this is the page that I was working on a little bit earlier in a previous video. Oh, let's jump over to my browser. And there we go. So this is our headline. It's back to left. Uh, our paragraph left aligned. Got a couple headline twos in there and there's a couple headline threes under one of my headline twos. Back over to our editor. And what we're going to do next is we're going to work on some lists. So I'm going to actually scroll down a bit here. Let's give myself some room to work. And I'll go ahead and create a headline 2 section. Why not? And these will be, uh, let's go ahead and put in definition lists. And in fact, in anticipation of future work, let's go ahead and put in ordered lists and a headline 2 for unordered lists. These are the three basic kinds of lists you could have on a web page. A definition list is just what it sounds like. It's used in a glossary, and it's probably not the most popular form of list out there, so we won't spend a lot of time with this one, but let's just try it out since you will come across it. Um, a definition list is made up of a set of DL tags. There we go, opening and closing DL tags. And within a definition list, you will have multiple sets of terms and definitions. So. There's a DT tag for the term, and then there's a DD tag for the definition of that term. There we go. And let me go ahead and do another one just so we can really see it in action. I'll do another definition term, and for this one, let's go ahead and put in a block element as the term. Then I'll do a definition for that. Basically, uh, there we go. Web page elements that separate themselves from surrounding content. Notice I hit a few spaces here for some indentation. That's not going to affect the result of my web page. Um, I just do it because I think it looks neat on my markup. So, closing definition tag. So. And my definition list has let me, has two terms, and each term has a definition. So let me go ahead and save this and jump back over to the browser and refresh. And there's my definition, definition list down here in the lower portion. Notice that the definition is indented on the page, and that's a default formatting characteristic of the DD tag. And we could certainly modify this a lot with style sheets, and we will in future videos. Now let's move on though. Um, let's go ahead and take care of our ordered lists. Now we're getting a little bit more common here. An ordered list is made up of a set of OL tags. And within those OL tags, we're going to have a series of list items. There we go. So I have an ordered list. Save this. Jump over to the browser. Refresh. There we go. In the lower portion, I can see my ordered list as items 1, 2, and 3. Now I'm going to do a little CSS trick, so to speak, on here. Because I want you to be able to, I want to be able to scroll up a little higher so these aren't always showing up at the bottom of my page. So I think what I will do is I'm going to scroll up here to my body tag. I'm not going to get into this in any detail. It's in a other topic, but I'm going to do a style. Um, padding bottom, 200 pixels. Okay. So now when I go to my browser, I've got this big chunk of space here, so whatever I'm talking about at the moment will be up a little bit higher on the screen. So that's called an inline style, by the way. We'll do more of that later. Okay, here's my ordered list. Noted my, notice my ordered list is numbered. Now, you can actually change this. These are Arabic numerals. You can use Roman numerals. You can use um, alpha, uh, letters, ABC, that kind of stuff. And you can change those out by using a type attribute in the ordered list tag. I'm actually going to hesitate on showing that to you right now because there's slightly better method, methods with style sheets. So I will go and show you this one. Since I just did an inline style, might as well do another one here. For this ordered list, I'm going to do style equals 
um, list style type and then I'm gonna do let's say how about upper Roman let's see how that looks let me go ahead and do a save back to my browser refresh there we go upper case Roman numerals what about lower alpha there we go lowercase abc so that's the basics with unordered list now I'm going to enhance this list just a bit and we're going to create a nested list a list within a list so I'm going to go to my first list item here and just before the closing list item tag I'm going to press my enter key several times and within this space I'm going to create another ordered list so there's an ordered list within the list item within the list item means between the opening and closing list item tags and let me just put in a few other items in here item uh, I'll call it sub item 1 and sub item 2 there we go so I've made a little change there and let's check it out on the browser there we go. So now I have a little sub list within there. And of course, using that style attribute or some uh, inline styles or even an external style sheet, you can control what kind of ordering sequence we have. So our parent list has lower alpha, whereas our, def or as our sub list has the default uh, Arabic numerals. Now let's go ahead and try an unordered list. Unordered list is pretty similar, but instead we use a set of UL tags, unordered list. And with unordered list, the sequence of the items, the list items, should really not be important. If, if the sequence was important, then you would use an ordered list. So basically, it doesn't matter which of these three items you get first at the store, you just have to get them all. And let me go ahead and save this back to the browser and refresh, and there's our unordered list, or bulleted list. Similarly, you can create nested bulleted lists. You can also use that style attribute and you can change the kinds of bullets shown. These are disks, but you can also use circles, squares, or even images. Um, you, there's a list style image and you could have an image be the bullet for your unordered list. Okay. In the next video, we're going to check out a couple more things, then we'll validate one final time and publish.